Add Excel Corpio, matrices 3, determinants and inverses. Determinants and transformations. Previously, we have looked at the matrix 1, 0, 2, 1. And we're now going to apply it to the unit square object. This transformation is a shear with the x-axis invariant. And the point 0, 1, for example, has been transformed to the point 2, 1. We can see here that the area of the shape is the same as the original object. In this example, the orange square is an enlargement of the black square by a scale factor of 2. And the thing we need to consider is what is the area of the object and what is the area of the image. So we can see that the area of the original black object is 9 squares and that the orange image is 36 squares. The transformation involved in this situation is represented by the following matrix. T equals 2, 0, 0, 2. So what effect does this transformation have on the area? So the area has gone from 9 up to 36. And if we look at the determinant of t, we can see that its determinant is 4. So what we're investigating now is the relationship between the determinant of the transforming matrix and the area scale factor involved in the transformation. So in this problem, we have a transformation of the unit square under the matrix A, which is 3 minus 1, 1, 1. And the image is shown on the diagram, and it is the image is 0, 0, 3 minus 1, 4, 0, 1, 1. If we look at the area of the parallelogram image, it can be seen that we can do the area as eight complete squares for this rectangle, and then we can take off the triangular bits around the edge that we do not need. And the area of this parallelogram is four square units. And now it's worth noting that the determinant of the original transforming matrix A was 3 times 1 take away minus 1. So the determinant of A was 4 and the area of this image was 4. If we now look at a general transformation of the unit square under any matrix M, here we're looking at the general matrix A, B, C, D, then the image of the unit square would be given by those coordinates and the area of this parallelogram image may be found by AD minus BC, or the determinant of M. For a 2 by 2 matrix M, the associated image area will be changed by a scale factor of determinant M. So here, um, we have a triangular object, and it's going to be transformed as under successive transformations A followed by B. So A is the matrix which will reflect it in the x-axis. So the image would look something like that. And then B is the matrix which will rotate it about the origin by 90 degrees. So the image would look something like this. So there's a reflection in the x-axis followed by a 90 degree anti-clockwise rotation about the origin. So there we can see the original object and the new image. If we were going to look at the inverse of BA in terms of mapping so that the final image maps back to the original then we would have to undo this these consecutive transformations, the first thing we'd need to do would be to do the inverse of B, so we'd apply the inverse of B, so that would be a 90 degree clockwise rotation about the origin, followed by the inverse of A. So the order of the, the, that you apply the matrices is extremely important 
when you're doing transformations or applying inverse transformations. So the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix gives the signed area scale factor of the associated transformation. That means that the determinant may be positive and it may be negative, but it will tell you the area scale factor. Area cannot be negative, however, so the sign of the determinant is a geometrical significance. If we consider the transformations we've represented in previous sessions by 2 by 2 matrices, we've looked at rotations, reflections and enlargements. For which of these are, are the order of the vertices or, if you prefer, the orientation of the shape reversed? So you feel free to pause the video at this point to just consider which of those transforming matrices would change the order in which we would write the vertices or their orientation on the diagram. So now looking at a few particular examples, we've got a reflection in the x-axis matrix, we've got a matrix that will enlargement of scale factor 3 centred on the origin and a third matrix which is an anti-clockwise rotation of 90 degrees about the origin. And if we look at their determinants, let's have a think about the conclusions we can draw. So the determinant of this first matrix is minus 1. So have a think about what that reflection matrix would do to an object and the orientation of the letters. The determinant of this second matrix is 9. So have a think about the effect that the significance of 9 in terms of the area of an object enlarged with a scale factor, a linear scale factor of 3. And the determinant of this last matrix is 1. So the significance of that in terms of an anti-clockwise rotation, 90 degrees about the origin. And we're going to have a look at some of these in a ge uh, GeoGebra file in a moment. So here we have the unit square labelled A, B, C, D. And at the moment, the transforming matrix is the identity matrix 1, 0, 0, 1. So the first thing I'm going to do is to turn it into our reflection matrix. So I'm going to do that by turning the D element into a minus 1. And we can see the determinant is minus 1. And the significance of that is that the area scale factor is still the area is still one but the orientation of the letters has been reversed so it now goes d c d dash c dash b dash a dash and that's because the object has been reflected in the x-axis so that's the significance of the negative determinant if we now go to the enlargement matrix so i'm back to the identity matrix i'm now going to change a into three so we can see it has been stretched horizontally by a scale factor of 3. And then I'm going to change D into a 3. So it's been stretched vertically by a scale factor of 3. And now if we look at the determinant, which is 9, we can see that the unit square has become an image of 9 units squared. And the orientation of the letters is exactly the same. That's because the determinant was a positive 9. Again, if I go back to the identity matrix, and now I'm going to change the matrix again into a rotation matrix. And you can see the determinant is 1. And although there's been a rotation of 90 degrees anticlockwise about the origin, the orientation of the letters is still A dash B dash C dash D dash. One more example. Now we can see two interesting things happening. The determinant is 0. And visually, the unit square has been mapped onto a straight line. And that straight line as we can see, has an area which is clearly zero, and the determinant was zero. So the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix gives the signed area scale factor of the associated transformation of a 2D shape. 
the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix will give the signed volume scale factor of a 3D shape. For example, a unit Q um, being transformed to a parallelepiped. The sign of the determinant is still of geometrical significance as the 3D shape vertices orientation is preserved if the determinant is positive and it will be reversed if the determinant is negative. So if the determinant of the matrix is 0, for example 1, 4, 2, 8, under this transformation all points on a plane are mapped to a straight line through the origin and in this case the line is y equals 4x. More than one point may be mapped onto the same image point and this is called the transforming the plane. Note that the zero matrix that maps all points to the origin. So if we consider a rectangle on a 2D pair of axes, so these are the coordinates of the object vertices as a matrix, and if we transform that object using the matrix 1, 1, 2, 2, and we know the determinant is 0, then the image would be a straight line. And we can see that by doing the multiplication. So if we multiply the object by 1, 1, 2, 0, so working across the top, we're going to get 3, 6, 10, Seven, and across the bottom we're going to get 3, 6, 10, 7 again. And if we look at the x and the y coordinates we can see that the x coordinates is always matching the y coordinate. So the line, the image line is y equals x. That's the equation of the image line in this case. So if the determinant is 0, so a 2 by 2 matrix with the determinant of 0, any shape is transformed into a shape with 0 area. In effect, all the points on the plane are mapped to a straight line passing through the origin. For a 3 by 3 matrix with the determinant of 0, any shape is transformed into a shape with no volume. So in effect, all points are mapped to the same plane, and the unit cube, for example, is mapped to a parallel piped, of volume zero. So in the next session we're going to be looking at inverses and transformations.